How to control blood sugar while eating what you love. We all know that eating too much sugar is bad for our health, but sometimes it is hard to resist those tempting sweets, especially when we are feeling stressed or down. Controlling your blood sugar levels while still eating what you love sounds like an impossible task, but it doesn't have to be. With a little bit of knowledge and effort, you can actually keep your blood sugar in check without feeling deprived. So what can we do to control our sugar intake while still enjoying the delicious foods we love? First, it's important to understand how sugar affects our health, right? Consuming too much sugar can lead to weight gain, increased blood sugar levels, diabetes, you all know that. But too much sugar doesn't just make us fat. It also robs our bodies of essential nutrients and minerals. I will tell you how this happens and what to do about it during this video. So stick around and let's learn how to control blood sugar while eating things you love. And remember, just like there is no quick fix for blood sugar, learning how to fix your blood sugar can take time too. Second, we all need to be more mindful of the amount of sugar we are consuming. This means reading those boring labels, I know, becoming familiar with the different names for uh, sugar, such as simple sugar, complex sugar, etc. It also means being aware of how much sugar is in our favorite foods and drinks. A can of Coke, for example, contains a shocking 39 grams of sugar that is almost 10 teaspoons. And a small cup of your favorite fancy Starbucks coffee can be up to 30 grams of sugar. That's a heck of a lot of sugar. We will uncover the number of carbs and sugars in some of your favorite foods today and even how to substitute them without feeling deprived. Thirdly, did you know that there are some sneaky things hidden in your favorite foods that can raise your blood sugar levels? By removing these things from your diet, you can make your favorite foods healthier and you may not even notice a difference in taste so what are these tricky things hidden in our food let's take sugar is one of the biggest offenders when it comes to raising blood sugar levels and it is everywhere from candy and cookies to bread and soda and even sauces so if you're a diabetic, it is important to cut back on those sugary, sneaky sugars. Luckily, there are plenty of diabetic friendly recipes out there that use alternative sweeteners like stevia or whatever you like it. But these are found in foods like white bread, pasta, rice. These things are rapidly digested, right? They quickly turn into sugar, which can raise your blood sugar levels in a heartbeat. So if you're diabetic, it is important to choose, for example, sprouted whole grain alternatives to the refined carbs. So not only they are healthier for you, but they also help control your blood sugar levels. Now, hidden sugars are absolutely everywhere. By removing them from your diet, you can make your favorite foods healthier and you may not even notice the difference in taste. So next time you're planning a meal, Keep these things in mind and make sure to include diabetic friendly recipes. Your favorites may just become healthier alternatives, right? Just a little changes. Let's talk about how sugar affects our health. There are a reasonable bunch of mechanisms that some of them are direct, some of them are indirect, but they all cause cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. The direct pathway involves the uncontrolled uptake and metabolism of fructose by your liver, which leads to buildup of cholesterol in your liver, and that creates less insulin sensitivity and high levels of uric acid. So observational data suggests that these direct effects of fructose are related to high fructose corn syrup, which are the most common added sugars that contain fructose. People who eat a lot of added sugar are way more likely to get or already have fatty liver, high cholesterol, insulin resistance, high uric acid, gout, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes. This is often true even if they don't gain weight or eat a lot of calories. So when people ate high sugar diets instead of controlled diets, their insulin sensitivity went down always, even without gaining weight. So. Consider brushing up on your 
label reading skills. It is not uncommon for food labels to be inaccurate sometimes too, but they can be up to 10% off. So I know scary, but these nutrition labels are there to give you guidance. So, and then the word includes before what added sugars on the label means the number of grams of total sugars in the product includes the added sugar. So it is, is a great idea to always check the label to see how much added sugar is in a food. A couple of things to keep in mind is number one, 5% of the daily value or less is a low source of added sugar. 20% or more of the daily value is a lot of added sugar. When it comes to counting carbs, you need to pay attention to three things. One is serving size. How many serving size are in a container or in that food? And total carbohydrate grams per serving. Now, total carbohydrate shows how many grams of carbohydrates are in one serving. But when you read the label, be careful. As a matter of fact, be a label detective. There are or there may be more than one serving in a package. So if you eat more than one serving, you will need to multiply the grams of carbohydrates by the number of servings you ate. So what if you eat more than one serving or less than one? Let's try a label here. For example, 90 grams if you are weighing the product, a total amount of carbs in that is, for example, 30 grams. Having six pieces is two servings. You would get a total of 60 grams of carbs, which is one serving has 30 grams. So if you're having two, that's 60 grams of carbs. Or if you only ate one piece, you would only get like 10 grams of carbohydrate. So if three pieces add up to three total carbs, then each piece will have 10 grams of carbs, right? So on the nutrition facts label, the grams of dietary fiber are already counted as part of total carbohydrate count. However, because fiber is a type of carbohydrate that your body cannot break down, it doesn't necessarily raise your blood sugar levels. So that's why we always recommend high fiber food. You can take the grams of fiber out of the total amount of carbs if you want to be exact on your carbs, but the fiber is your friend, my friend. So for more than one reason, when you look at the food label, the sugars are already counted as a total amount of carbs or included in the total amount of carbs. So you don't have to count them separately. So the grams of sugar listed include both sugars that come naturally, like from fruit or milk and sugars that are added. So when they say sugar, sugar is sugar, right? The so sugar alcohols may also be listed under total carbohydrate as well on some nutrition fact labels. Sugar alcohols can be found in foods that say sugar free or no sugar added on the label, but don't be fooled. Sugar alcohols are still a type of carbohydrate and they still affect your blood sugar levels, even if not as much, you know, but still they do. Usually carbs count for about half of the sugar alcohol. Last but not least, we will talk about sneaky things in our food that causes high blood sugar. So a couple of things that we didn't talk about coffee. The more caffeine you drink, the less likely it is that you will get type 2 diabetes. In a study that was published in a journal of diabetologia, people who drank at least one more cup of coffee every day saw their risk of type 2 diabetes drop by 11% over a four year period. So there's nothing wrong with coffee, especially if it is a black coffee, it's a win. But what can cause a blood sugar problem is all about what is in that coffee. So adding sweeteners, creamers, and other flavorings can increase the amount of added sugar, which can cause or increase your risk of being diabetic. Uh, but also we talked about how coffee, if you already have diabetes, can actually raise your blood sugar, even if it is black, because it raises adrenaline and some other things. Let's talk about instant oatmeal that a lot of people eat. So I would say if you're eating carbs, you gotta be as close to as, as natural source as possible. So yes, oatmeal can help lower blood sugar levels if you are preferring a nice steel cut oatmeal over cereal, for example, it will still raise your blood sugar. But when it is processed like an instant oatmeal, it's a lot easier for your body to break it down and raise your blood sugar like in a heartbeat. Yeah, if you want that popular breakfast, you wanna get some oats, steel cut oats, your grandma's favorite, old fashioned oats, they're always a better choice. It will take a little more time, but if you wanna eat that, that's the way to go. Now, how about the brown rice? Let's be clear, brown rice and other whole grains that haven't been processed are 
generally better for you. So the darker they are, typically the better. Always choose whole grains because of the fiber in them. Because of the fiber, it takes a lot longer to digest and doesn't spike your blood sugar as much. It will, but not as much. So you may want to also watch about the carbohydrates you eat at once. That is important to consider, right? So if you're diabetic, it's clear that you're not handling the carbs very well. So what's the point of digging in and eating a lot of carbs? So if you're gonna really have some whole grains, yes, so be considerate of your portion size. For example, a cup of rice can be up to 50 grams of carbs, which you may not be able to handle. So it's better to replace that with vegetables and maybe some beans, etc. Try to go below 30 grams of carbs per meal if you're not going lower than that. If you go lower than that, that's fine. But I think 30 grams of carbs per meal is fairly healthy for most diabetics if you don't want to give up on carbs entirely. Now, bread made with wheat isn't always a whole grain. Whole grains are better than refined grains, but you have to look for the sprouted ones, right? So please make sure, you know, when you're getting something, you know what you're getting. It may just say whole grain, but it may not be whole grain. So there are so many kinds of bread in the store that it's easy to be swayed by the claims on the package that says the wheat or made with whole grain. This is very different from foods that are made only of whole grains. So read the list of ingredients and make sure the first thing on the list is 100% whole grain. Now let's talk about Chinese takeouts. So when you eat out, the effect on your blood sugar depends on what you choose to eat. So it is better for your blood sugar if you can choose takeout that has more vegetables and more whole grains. So you should know that it can be too sweet if it is salty and maybe even greasy. So the high amount of fat, the sugar in the sauce, the white rice are probably what causes your blood sugar spike dramatically when you go to a Chinese restaurant. So as long as you stay away from the foods that have too much salt, sugar, and fat, you're good to go. Now. Organic is another word on a label that most people think, perfect, healthy, I'm good, 100% healthy, organic. Well, organic snacks are not always better for you. So, dried fruits. Even though they're fruits, many brands add actually sugar to them when they dry because they get tart when you dry them. So, in fact, one popular dried cranberry brand has almost 30 grams of sugar per quarter cup added to it. Some of this sugar comes from the fruit itself, but I would say choose kinds that they don't have the added sugar and it's better to stay away from the dried ones because it concentrates the sugar, right? So if you're gonna have a fruit, go have the real fruit, the juicy one, not the dry one, okay? Now let's talk about the steak, right? Well, that's not that easy. Meat is mostly made up of protein and fat, so not carbs. So, you know, of course it's not gonna cause blood sugar spikes. So, so probably won't have much effect on your blood sugar in the short term, but remember, the saturated fat in that meat, if it is not grass fat or grass finished, it's going to cause inflammation and insulin resistance, even if it doesn't raise your blood sugar. So it is in the long term not good for you if you're eating cheap meat. So people with prediabetes and type 2 diabetes are more likely to have heart attacks as well and strokes and so forth. So eating too much saturated fat will make your cardiovascular disease worse. I don't care what other people, what other chiropractors are saying to you who do not have MD after their name, but any MD, any medical doctor, anybody who went to school for 20 years will tell you that saturated fat is not good for you. So you can believe whatever you wanna believe, but there is no evidence whatsoever for people to say, oh, just eat any meat and saturated fat is good for you. That is just a total BS. I'm just so sorry for those who believe in that. Another thing that's crazy is whole grain pizza. Even though it's whole grain, it is still pizza. It still has a lot of fat, a lot of crazy things in it. Uh, they say thin crust pizza is, is a better choice, but still, you know, your, the tomato sauce is in there is another sneaky way to get the sugar in. So you have to be careful about those. Now the dairy, the yogurt, milk, cheese, these can be good sources of calcium and vitamin D, for example. But I would say, you know, you're a middle-aged man or a woman, you know, you like the milk, you like the milk products, you will develop insulin resistance if you have too much of those. Stick with the cheese, stick with the raw cheese if you can, but too much milk eventually will create insulin resistance and saturated fat also in the dairy will be a problem, especially if it is coming from a, an animal that is not grass fed. So the goat milk, if you like the taste, taste is the best, 
but if you have to stick with the dairy and you cannot afford the organic and grass-fed ones, then go for the low-fat ones and try to keep it low so that you don't load yourself with the carbohydrates. Always choose the right pair by adding some healthy food to slow down the carbs as well. Like if you're adding olive oil, for example, or maybe using peanut butter or anything like that, if you wanna have a toast, put some fat on it, right? That will slow down the absorption. The fiber does the same thing, flax seed. If you're having yogurt, mix those with berries and some chia seeds. So again, sometimes you have to be careful if you're adding animal fat, it may look like your blood sugar is not rising at first, but it will rise later and that may be a problem. So again, thanks for watching. It was a long video. If you stuck until the end of this video, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Give a thumbs up, share with the family and friends. I think there's some valuable information here. You like it or not, or you deny it or not. And I think some people will like that. So go ahead and share that. And I really appreciate it. So write your comments below. I want to hear from you as well. And most of all, and most importantly, have a 